You are listening to Leave Your Mark with your host, Vince Cortez. Leave Your Mark. Inspiring the world, one guess at a time. How, how you progress through something like that, there's, you know, you, you're managing your way is an incredible journey for somebody in your situation. Yeah, it's been a challenge for me. I think some blind people are just maybe more naturally adept at it. I'm not. So it's been something that I've really had to work on. Um, for me, I want everybody to feel comfortable because if they're comfortable, then I can be comfortable. But that's not always realistic. And then there's also the part that you educate one person and there's so many more, you know, every day is educating new people. And, and it does get tiring because, you know, there's really no end to it in sight, I guess. So that's something that I've really struggled with. I've struggled with the anxiety of feeling like I need to be on all the time when I'm outside of my house. So, you know, on and available for people to ask me questions that they really shouldn't be asking as somebody that they don't know. So, <laughs> And, and also the whole like ambassador, I guess, of, of, you know, it's, it's wrong. It shouldn't be this way, but sometimes I feel like I have to be a good ambassador for other people who are blind because often, and I've heard this before, people will be like, oh, I met this blind person and I thought you would be the exact same. <laughs> like, no, we're all different with different personalities. So, I mean, some of us are nice, some of us aren't. But for me, it was always, oh, if I leave a bad impression, then I'm just going to make things harder for the next blind person. So it was a lot of pressure and is a lot of pressure to be on all the time. Let, let me ask you to share an insight or experience on an inpatient psychiatric care, like the barriers that people are faced with with the disabilities. Yeah, so... For inpatient psychiatric care, it was actually one of the lesser experiences that I've I've had with um, barriers. I guess people were, for the most part, in the hospital setting, very accepting because they're dealing with all kinds of of different people from different backgrounds. So you know you can't really be shy about those sorts of things when you're working in that uh -huh. setting. So it was actually you know, as hard, as difficult of an experience as it was, it was really positive for me in that way. But now, how would you um, help someone or a loved one who's facing these types of challenges? I think for, for mental health in particular and for disability as well, I think it's important as a society, as people, that we become better listeners, that we're not always trying to fix a situation because some situations can't really be fixed. Sometimes people just need that support. Sometimes people need help to access professional services if they're really struggling. So I think it's, it's so important to listen, to take care of ourselves as well, because we can't take care, we can't help other people if we're not taking care of ourselves, but really to become better active listeners that would probably be the best way we could work together to to create a more inclusive world yes. now let me ask you um you're passionate about providing encouragement to those that are struggling with depression and you're a person who has reached rock bottom and you're now in recovery so what advice or suggestions would you give from your experience for people going through similar situations as yourself? Give yourself a bit of grace. You know, we all have our on days and our off days and it's not, you know, recovery is not a finish line. It's, it's a choice that you make every day. You get up and you make the choice to try again for another day. So give yourself that grace to, I think, our society is a bit um, obsessed with the quick fix. So if we're practicing, you know, self-care or, or different ways of thinking, different um, therapeutic techniques, sometimes it doesn't work th the first time or, you know, mindfulness, for example, or meditation. It's something that takes practice 
like anything like music like sports it's something that we have to get good at and some days we're going to be better at it than others and and that's okay but don't give up on it don't write it off the first time just because you think oh i'm i'm no good at this this doesn't work If you like this episode, you're going to love this next one. Click the link.